All right, let's see what what regular mapping looks like here. Oh my god. This is actually once we have if we do damage, this actually could be insane. Let's just lean back, see what happens. I don't know what's going to happen. You guys don't know what's going to happen. <clears throat> Nobody knows what's going to happen. Don't. We did it. We did it. <laughs> Hey, what's up everyone? Just wanted to share with you guys stuff that we've been doing for the past couple days. I went back into the lab. As you can see, my inventory is back as a mess. A couple days ago, I saw Pelstron's video about how Wilma's Requital is absolutely insane and busted, and I wanted to play around with it. I had remembered from last league, Mathel playing around with alternate quality kinetic bolt and seeing how crazy it can get by stacking as much cast speed as possible which will then transfer to attack speed at 200% its value. And I wanted to go even further by using Ashes, Dialas, and an Enhance. I have it up to 300% of increases in cast speed applied to attack speed. This stacks with Wilma's increases to cast speed applied to attack speed. So for every 1% cast speed that we get, that will apply as if it's 4% attack speed. You can very easily stack a comical amount of attack speed. I wanted to go even further than where I went with this. The problem is the game engine can't handle it. This is full like salutations exile. This is how you crash the game. It is damage per frame or I don't know, <laughs> like frames per damage or whatever would be how you're actually calculating what's going on here. I had to like kind of stop the experiment because it was so crazy. So many projectiles on the screen the game just kept crashing. And I spent a little bit of time kind of going into trying to scale some damage so the monsters would die faster and, you know, doing all that type of stuff. And I just want to share with you guys, like, this stage of the experimentation. I actually think I might back off of using Wilma's and just lean into self-cast anomalous kinetic vault and just try to do something that's kind of just walk around and, and uh, <laughs> as you can already see. As you can already see, this is absolutely crazy. <laughs> like, I can drop the Wilma's, right? And it's still... A lot. This is one of the craziest interactions I've ever seen. Definitely look at what Palsaron is doing with the champion Toxic Rain. You know, currently this is just a five chaos super common helmet. Much like Heat Shiver, if it is not touched next league, it will be one of the meta uniques to play around with. Definitely buy them up, start double corrupting them, and you're going to have some of the craziest builds that I've ever seen. Let's just quickly go over what I've done and uh, kind of my plans moving forward with this. So like I said, Anomalous Kinetic Bolt right here. So if we go to just a regular 20%, Anomalous Kinetic Bolt, you'll see that increases and reductions to cast speed apply at 50% of their value. What we do is we put this in a Diala's Malification, which says you can socket gems ignoring the color. So you just get this bonus based on the color of the socket, but it doesn't matter. It's like they're white sockets. You can put anything in there. If it's a red socket, it gets plus two level. If it's a green socket, it gets plus 30% quality. And even if you're just leeching five ways and you want to level up gems, they get double XP as well if it's a blue socket. So what I'm doing is it is a 20% Anomalous Kinetic Bolt which then we're using with an enhance in a red socket. So the level four enhance becomes a level six enhance, which gives it plus 40% quality. The green socket gives it 30% quality. So it's plus 70. And then I get another plus 30. So I get 100% quality plus on the gem, making it a 120% quality gem, which brings that 50% up to 300%. Yeah, it's pretty wacky. And then what we can do is use really, really cheap items that stack a little bit of attack and cast speed and because we're super dipping, we're like not even double dipping, not even triple dipping. We're like quintuple dipping here, right? Because we get 300% value here. We get 100% value here for 400%. And then with the attack speed as well, this time class that normally would just give you 15% attack or cast speed, I'm actually getting 75% attack speed on this time class. This one's perfectly rolled, which allowed me to use catalyst. And that gives that to 18 and 18 for even more. So that 75% actually goes to 90% with the catalyst on there, which is <laughs> absolutely insane. <laughs> so the game can't handle this many projectiles just to see how funny it can be. I put in GMP, I put in greater volley, I put in faster proj and faster attacks just for absolute wackiness. On top of that, 
Frenzy Charges actually give you increased attack and cast speed, and that will also quintuple dip. And what I did with this build is I get plus one Frenzy Charge here, and this is just all leftover gear from my previous character. Um, this is not like a real build at all. This is just an experiment for, you know, <laughs> for doing this. So yeah, that gives us an actual comical attack speed that can crash the game. Since Wilma's Requital gives you Ancestral Bond, you have to use totems. Ancestral Bond, you can't deal damage with skills yourself, but you get plus one maximum number of totems. I did experiment, as you can see, I experimented with everything that I could. We got Power Siphon right here. We got Elemental Hit. And I actually think Ellie Hit might be the best skill for this setup for scaling normal raw damage. The other skills will only double dip instead of quintuple dip, so you don't get the crazy, crazy attack speed. But I think for scaling regular raw damage, it's a little bit easier. Yeah, we can do Kinetic Blast with a Nimbus, attack very quickly, pretty fun. The other thing that kind of synergizes here is I'm using, you know, since I'm a Wander, I'm using the Wand Mastery for increases to spell damage applied to attacks. And then I have these 12 passive cluster jewels that give me spell damage and cast speed, which will be, you know, giving me 4x the value. So each one of these is giving me 16% attack speed. <laughs> Every single one of these passive nodes. This is really, really cool. And I'm looking forward to playing around with this a little bit more. Uh, let me just show you guys a map here really quick to give you a little bit of a taste. We might even get close to crashing the game. This setup right now, it is moderately like ZDPS. This is not... You know, I didn't even bother with scaling damage right now. You know, I probably don't have res capped. Yeah, I'm not res capped or anything. This is not a complete build or anything. This is just an expression of a really cool idea. The one thing I just want to highlight and just keep talking about is that this helmet alone, I think, even if it costs 20, 40, 50 chaos on League Start, it is so powerful. We already know how good Ballista Totems are. This takes it to the next level with very, very cheap uniques. We can get so much attack speed that will scale out of control. I'm um, particularly on a champion with adrenaline, onslaught, haste, that double dipping. I think that this is just going to be the meta helmet for the first couple of weeks of the league. Keep that in your mind. Don't forget that when league start. Write, write that down in a notepad. Don't forget it for league start. So yeah, what we're going to do here is I have my golems that are giving me okay defenses. That's This is kind of an annoying thing is the defenses are not that good. Uh, I wish the Chaos and Stone Golem were a little bit stronger. I have them scaled up to, like, to be pretty good. You know, without that little bit of armor, I get like 23% increased physical damage reduction. It's a little bit. You would still want armor behind that. You would run Determination in a, in a real build. You know, the Stone Golem's gonna be 421 life regen per second. They're like kind of weak there, but offensively, they do give you a decent amount of a bonus here. The Ice Golem gives you accuracy, crit chance. The Lightning Golem gives you attack and cast speed. Unfortunately, the attack and cast speed from the Lightning Golem, this is the big kind of differentiator here, is when the line says attack and cast speed, and there's no comma or anything like that, like Onslaught has a comma, it's like attack speed and cast speed. If it's just one line attack and cast speed, it doesn't quintuple dip, but we would hopefully just get the value, the 4x from the cast speed and not the 1x from the attack speed. I'm not sure exactly how that, you know, how Wilma's takes that. It's still really good, and, and I really do notice with the Lightning Golem summoned and not. I'm manually attacking with Frenzy to generate Frenzy and Power Charges. I'm going to be shield charging around really, really fast, and I'm just going to drop one totem and keep going, and you'll see, uh, you'll see what this looks like. Um, I think if this is built out as a real build on a Deadeye, I, I think Deadeye is probably just like the right answer, right? It almost always is for, <laughs> for projectile skills. Um, I think someone, if they're dedicated to make like a solid build out of that, I just, I don't want to level a Deadeye right now. Sorry. <laughs> um, I think you could make an absolutely insane, very, very strong build here. And then, yeah, let's take a look at what this looks like. Get the sniper's mark on. Hopefully the monster dies before I do. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Let's go back and check. Nope, monster's still alive. All right, hold on. Yeah, like I said, we have no defenses here. All right. And a uh, better demonstration on the boss as well. So as soon as I put Sniper's Mark on, it'll it'll split on the boss. So let me get my Frenzy Charges up. All right, well, we died at the same time. <laughs> hold on. Let me, let me run that back real quick. So yeah, I had forgot to get my Frenzy and Power Charges up before I fought the boss. So that was... Uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> when the game lags like this, I can't control it. I just have to, you know, let Chris Wilson take the wheel. Let's get in there with some frenzy charges up and see how this goes. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, there's zero defense on this build right now. So I just kind of like hope when the game lags. There we go. All right. Rewritten distant memory. <laughs> Let's see what my uh, attacks per second here with all my buffs up. POB, unfortunately, doesn't properly calculate at all. 
Let's see, get all my frenzy charges, and then we get the totems down. It says 10.3 attacks per second, and that's, you know, times five totems. So 50, <laughs> 50 kinetic bolts per second. How many kinetic bolts? So 50 times six, we have 300 projectiles shot per second. And then if we're, it's even worse with a Nimus, because if we put the Nimus in, then they're all going to return as well. So they're going to live like twice as long on the screen, which absolutely crashes the entire game. Anyway, I wanted this to just be like a little bit of build inspiration for you guys. If you haven't played around with this helmet yet, I would not be surprised, honestly. Like it wasn't meta at all. Not, this is kind of like a late discovery for a lot of people. This is an item that if people really lean into it, they do it on a character that is actually scaling damage. Golemancer, unfortunately, is just kind of like a weak archetype, which makes me sad because it's one of my favorites in the game. You do this on a Deadeye. You do this on a Pathfinder. You do this on a Champion. You could hit some like, real game breaking hundreds of millions of dps i think and i want to see you guys put stuff together and i want to hear about it so that's it for me today i'm going to keep playing around with this and definitely join me on the stream tomorrow if you want to see where we take this the plan is actually drop wilma's get out of the totem thing and then just lean into self cast or self attack i guess anomalous kb because that way i don't have to invest into all the totem stuff you know i'm a little invested over here my anointment is also panopticon Unfortunately, totems are, they're their own playstyle. They're strong for what they are. You know, there's definitely some playstyle downsides that I don't mind totems, but I'm not the biggest totem fan. So, you know, I can still attack pretty quickly without the Wilmas. And I think that there's a path for a, uh, a really cool build here. But yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a good one. Goodbye.